Let's see if I can catch you. There he is. Oh, he's flying. Oh, holy crap. It's 8.45, uh, August 1st here. We're still kind of going away tonight at wheat. I don't know if we'll go much longer. Uh, the sun's going down as you can see. Maybe. There you go. And uh, it's not getting tough yet, but there's uh, just enough uh, lambs quarters in the wheat here. Uh, just because uh, there's a few thin spots and it's coming up through the wheat uh, that can kind of cause some issues as uh, the kind of dew sets in so just kind of going with the feel of the combine I've been lucky enough to get it off 18 or 19 acres here in this piece uh, which uh, is good because uh, we have 80 acres here to do total uh, for Brett custom work and uh, we'll easily be able to get 60 off tomorrow and then we can move uh, move the unit back home again so we're not very far we're only I don't know five six miles at most from home and it's kind of just straight down the road so it's not a big deal uh, the wind is staying up tonight uh, so usually when the wind kind of stays up the dew doesn't set in so quick so I'm not sure what's going to happen here, if it's going to stick around or not, but uh, we'll just keep going as long as we can, uh, ensuring that we're still doing a good job. And uh, we'll shut down if we run into problems here with uh, too much uh, too much dew. So. We're on day seven of wheat here, uh, back at it. It's about one o'clock this afternoon. I left my camera in the combine overnight, so I didn't take you with me this morning where we started spraying some corn with uh, fungicide at Tasseling. So uh, we covered about 100, about 100 acres this morning uh, doing that. Uh, I'll, I'll get some footage of that when we uh, get back at it and I remember to bring my camera with me. But uh, we're just going to fire up the combine here waiting for the GPS to find its uh, location. See what the moisture is doing. I expect it'll be fine here at 1 o'clock and there's a nice little breeze now. Um, hopefully we get this uh, 60, well, I think it's about 55 acres to do today, which won't be a problem, hopefully. Then we'll get that done and we'll get back to uh, move everything back home. So anyways, I'm going to engage the threshing and fire up the beast. Let's give her a go. Well, we're still going strong here. We got to that other field finished up and moved over. It was, uh, it's always unique on a holiday weekend. It's uh, August 1st long weekend, civic holiday. And uh, traffic on the road, this little main road goes to a town called Grand Bend. That's a big summertime place to go and uh, you gotta cross this road to get to this field here and get to get home and it's always like playing the game Frogger if you remember if you're old like me and remember the 80s video game uh, that's what it kind of feels like trying to get across with a combine a header a grain buggy and some wagons so uh, we made it over this field it's only a little 16 acre piece we got 13 acres done out of it and then uh, probably get the combine, get the header off the combine and uh, move home and uh, get set up to go to one of our fields tomorrow over by Hensel and uh, try to get a field off there. It's, uh, this wheat was planted in October, it's the same time I planted, uh, pretty close to the same time I planted a field. Uh, over at Hansel that we're going to go to next. 
And the yield's still pretty good. Um, just seeing a bit of a drop, I think, as we get into later planting dates, uh, we're seeing a bit of a drop in yield. Uh, nothing major. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what this farm is going to run at, but I think kind of as we go from September planted uh, wheat to late September planted wheat to kind of mid-October planted wheat, we're seeing like a five, five to ten, probably ten bushel yield uh, hit, and then as we probably hit late October, I'm assuming another ten bushel yield hit. So. For us, the, the early planted wheat that we started with, uh, the first day, couple days, well, up until the, uh, basically yesterday, kind of was all in that, say, 100 bushel range. And then uh, as we see planting days go later, uh, kind of by two weeks, we're seeing 90 bushels I, is my guess. And then as we go later again, my guess is 80. So that's kind of where my head's at right now. As we move to some of my late planted fields, is that uh, that last kind of 170 acres of mine? I kind of figure it's going to be uh, probably in that 80, hopefully 85 bushel range. And if we can do that, I'd be pretty happy because it looked like complete garbage this spring. Uh, and if you watch some of my other videos, you'll realize I was worried about um, what some of them are going to do and whether I should uh, actually spray it off and plant different crops. So uh, we'll see what those fields are like tomorrow. I'll keep you posted. But I think we're going to wrap up this uh, last little bit here. Have uh, dinner with our friends that we're doing the custom work with, uh, burger, move stuff home, and get ready for tomorrow. Uh, I My guess is we got three days yet of wheat. This being, I guess, we're calling day six of active combining and uh, six or seven I can't remember now I think it's day seven anyways I'll, I'll look back at some of my video clips and I'll let you know what it is but um, I kind of figured we'd have about ten days of combining we just because of uh, of the way it, it kind of works and uh, I'm pretty close to that. So today being Friday, we're bailing straw, Sunday, Monday, if all goes well, we'll be wrapped up wheat here. I'm hoping Monday night. Uh, we might just have to wait a bit on the one field because we desiccated it and wait for the weeds, weeds to burn off a bit more before we get into it. But uh, anyways, that's enough of me talking. Sandy's probably bored out of her mind. She looks kind of bored. I've been using one of these microfiber cloths to clean my windows and uh, it's not doing too bad. I wonder if it's static. I'm not sure if other people who combine uh, maybe watch these videos, any ideas on how to keep dust off a windshield. I know some guys drag a chain behind the combine to stop the static buildup, but I don't know. Um, I guess you just clean the windows every once in a while and go from there. But so far it's been pretty good, but the sun kind of just shows how dirty the windows do get. Sorry, my spelling is terrible because I can't see anything. The sun's right in the camera. That's uh, what Sandy was saying. We use a camera on the combine. Uh, we have a wireless display inside the buggy tractor uh, so they actually can see the auger they see what I see as I unload the combine and uh, the camera's up on my combine kind of right outside the door and it's kind of right into the sun right now and uh, you get a little bit of dust on that camera and trying to see that auger uh, spout kind of through that uh, Dusty lens uh, gets a little tough this time of night, especially the direction we're at right now. Kind of unloading with that camera facing the west. So uh, it's one of those small little bits of technology that uh, the buggy operator, whoever's running the buggy, seems to can't live without, uh, is having that camera uh, so they can see kind of what's going on. And just uh, 
really makes the process I think run the buggy a lot easier. Uh, I don't run the buggy so I don't know what it's like. I know what it's like to have cameras. I have one on a couple on the sprayer and stuff and it's nice to kind of see those areas where it's a little bit more difficult to um, see everything so I'll show you the camera sometime but we just use uh, cab cam. Some people use egg cam. It's kind of whatever you like but uh, it seems to work for us for the most part. It's not bulletproof by any means, but uh, it seems to serve a pretty good purpose. The one thing I do think about a little bit in the combine is I don't think we would have people video themselves or farmers do this like I am right now from a combine cab if we didn't have some of the technology we have in it. Uh, if I was trying to steer right now, I'd have to at least have this camera mounted somewhere as it is right now I'm just holding it with my hand uh, you know auto steer has really allowed me to do a lot of this stuff uh, document some of the things we do on the farm uh, because I can uh, even though I should probably pay attention to the, the vehicle that's moving around the field uh, I'm able to actually uh, do some drone footage which I find actually interesting because when I get drone footage like that it's a view I usually don't see and sometimes it's nice to see how an implement or a combine or anything like that kind of works from a perspective you're not used to looking at that, looking at it at. So, uh, you know, auto steer like that, as much as it helps me with uh, operator fatigue and ensuring the combine stays full and uh, the sample's good, it also lets me, A, make some videos like I am right now and document some stuff, but B, it uh, gives you another layer of information as an equipment operator that uh, we can see how things are working and uh, maybe even if we need to make some adjustments uh, to some of the equipment that we might not know we should do because we don't have that perspective. So that's uh, just kind of an interesting way to look at uh, using some of these things to our advantage on the farm, making us uh, more productive, better farmers. Just getting the combine fueled up for day eight a wheat harvest. Probably the, the worst part of day six and seven was the fact that I chased a skunk for two days in the one field and it sprayed me the first night or sprayed something. It, the combine wasn't too bad but yesterday I got hit I think pretty hard right around the, the ladder and the duels here on the front. It stinks pretty bad. Uh, I didn't put the combine in the shop last night just because uh, I'm hoping today we can uh, air it out a little bit, have it not stink too bad before we put it away tonight or even leave it out tonight if it doesn't rain again uh, like we did last night and then uh, basically we'll try to get the 110 acres off I guess uh, Sunday Monday is my plan so today we got a 70 acre piece over by Hensel that we're going to take off if all goes well we just finish filling up the fuel. My guess in the combine is we just did 100, 100 acres of wheat uh, on that kind of fill up of fuel and we put in about 700 liters of diesel so I can't do the math quick in my head but that's kind of what we're using in terms of liters per hour. I don't know what that is in gallons, it would take me a bit to figure it out but it's uh, chews up some juice. So we just got moved to the field here, up here on the screen that you can see hopefully. Just open it up quick so we can get some wagons in and the header cart in off the road. Uh, I think it's a little too wet, uh, 16 it says. Uh, I think this moisture tester when it's wet is reading a little heavy so uh, I think we got a can in the truck. We'll just pull a moisture sample and we'll head back out uh, back home and grab buggy and some wagons. Uh, I don't think we'll get going here probably until about noon. Uh, just let it dry down a little bit and we'll go from there. Just fired up the generator to uh, unload these wagons.
Well, that concludes day eight. Not much footage, especially combining, just because uh, I forgot my camera and the battery was dead in it anyways. So it was a pretty boring field, a lot of weeds in a couple spots. We probably had to drive around about two acres probably total just because of the uh, weeds. Uh, there was a beaver dam in a creek that I'll maybe show you another time, but it uh, basically flooded out an area which resulted in the weed getting drowned out. So just uh, getting the generator shut down now and uh, gonna have to clean out a bin for tomorrow. It looks like we actually have more wheat than we anticipated, which is a good sign. Uh, we got about 110 acres to take off yet and uh, we're getting tight on available storage. So we got one bin we can shove a little bit of wheat into, so we'll do that, uh, make sure it's ready for tomorrow. So with that, I guess we'll see you tomorrow.